Okay, we're going to talk about participles today. Pretty easy stuff for the most part. We're going to continue on talking about verbals this week. So if you remember last week we talked about infinitives. That's when you have two plus a verb, and it can act as a noun, an adjective, or an adverb within its sentence. This week we're going to be talking about participles. So a participle can be defined as a verb that is being used as an adjective describing or modifying nouns in our sentence. And there's two specific types of participles that we have. The first one being a present participle, and these always end in ing. So they're kind of a giveaway there where if you can find the ing word in your sentence when you're having to look for participles, chances are you might have a present participle. In our example, we have George made Alice some dancing shoes. If we look at the sentence, we know our subject is George, and what is he doing? He's making something for Alice, and that happens just to be dancing shoes. So the ing word we have is dancing, and we know that if we take that off, dance, that's a verb we can do. We can get up, we can dance, and whatnot. But in this sentence, it's helping us to identify what type of shoes George has made for Alice there. So that is your present participle in that example. Otherwise, if you don't have a present participle, we then have a past participle. So this usually ends in D or ED, but there's a couple of regular ones that can end in T, E, N, and N. So for example, burnt toast would be an example of an irregular past participle because it's still, uh, burn is still a verb, but instead of burned toast, we say burnt toast. So in our example here, we have many hands were raised when Mr. Beller asked a question. In this sentence, we're going to look for the D or ED word or words that we have there. Chances are, or lucky for us here, that we only have one and it happens to be raised. So raised is telling us more information about how the hands are within that classroom. That's how it's being used as an adjective there to modify what those hands look like and whatnot. So that is how we're using that past participle. So what I'm going to have you do is turn to the people at your table and go through one through five, trying to see if you can find the past and present participles. Be sure to underline them when you head up to the board, but also label if they're past or present and draw an arrow to the word that they are modifying. Go ahead and pause the video now so you can think through with the people at your table and then we'll go over your answers. Okay, so number one, we should have going, modifying rate, because you can go places, but it's modifying rate in this instance, telling us about how the home's rates are at that time. Number two should be gardening, telling us what kind of class that we're talking about, because you can go and garden and plant some seeds and whatnot. Number three, baked beans. You can bake cupcakes, but in this scenario, we're talking about what kind of beans we have. Number four, we have dyed fabric. You can dye or change the color of many things, but we're talking specifically about the fabric that has been dyed. And then in number five, we have broken modifying records. So you can break things, but we're talking about that record that is broken there. One more practice we're gonna do is when we're writing with participles, I can give you two sentences that are kind of simple and you turn them into one more complicated sentence. So for example, the frog is croaking, it is incredibly loud. You could rewrite this a number of different ways to include a participle. I did so to incorporate a present participle. So the croaking frog is incredibly loud. So it gives us the same information that those two sentences do. It just does so in a more concise package. So what I want you to do is with the people at your table, talk through these two of the goat fainted, its chest is rising and falling slowly, and the baby laughed. It giggled and squeaked with delight. See if you can come up with a way to combine those two sentences together to show a past or present participle in each one of those. After that, see if you can find all the past and present participles in the following three sentences. So I'll go ahead and pause the video now and then play again when you're ready for your answers. Okay, number one. Instead of having two sentences here, we could say the fainted goat's chest is rising and falling slowly. So there it makes it kind of complicated, but we still have that past participle of fainted telling us about the goat. Uh, number two, the laughing baby giggled and squealed with delight. That's using a present participle in that scenario. Um, then we have the running man narrowly dodged the falling boulder. We have running, present participle, modifying man, Falling, present participle, modifying, boulder. Number two, some burnt toast was left out overnight. So this is our regular example. You have burnt talking about toast here. So if you're paying attention, you'd get that one for free. 
And then finally, in the morning, the toast was covered in crawling ants. How can we describe the ants? They're crawling ants. They're not stationary. They're trying to eat that toast. So that is your present participle in the third one.